and I'm transparent about the process of forgiveness and healing. Forgiveness looks different every single day. You don't want to keep putting yourself in a loop of heartbreak and that's why boundaries is so important. You naturally have this trust for them. You naturally have this love for them. At the end of the day, your peace is protected. I choose to heal. I choose to heal. I choose to heal as an expression of love to myself, my community, this earth, and those who I'm descended from. Because holding on to my past traumas and holding on to bad things that people did to me was not leading to a happy life at all. Why wouldn't I want to be healed? Why do I want to sit around stress? Why do I want to sit around with weight on my shoulders? I want to be free. I want to feel liberated. I want to be able to accomplish things that my heart desires. Because my driving force is happiness. And I want to be and speak and live in a place of love and light versus a place of anger and resentment. Welcome to the Healers Break to Heal series, where we discuss the many ways we choose to heal, spreading high vibrational living and awareness internationally to create a collective divine energy that heals our universe. We believe in embracing our spiritual awakenings to identify our personal power and authentic selves. This series can be found on multiple platforms such as Lena Messick YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. To learn more, you can visit lenamysticoracle.com. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Hello, mystical light beings, and welcome to another episode of Healers Break to Heal. Today's episode is about forgiving people, but keeping boundaries, okay? We're still keeping those boundaries. <laughs> so a lot of people think that forgiveness looks like just moving along with that person that hurt you in your life. That's not always the case. You don't have to forgive someone that abused you and keep them in your life. You can forgive them, but you don't have to keep them in your life. There's still boundaries that you can set. But when it comes to your own personal life, you want to set boundaries with people that you feel like you're in a forgiveness loop with so that at the end of the day, your peace is protected because you don't want to keep putting yourself in a loop of heartbreak and then putting them in a loop of, I have to forgive them all over again. That's just not fair to you. And it's honestly not healthy for them either. It's enabling behavior that you're taking part in for them. You don't want to enable people. You want them to be aware of the way that they hurt you and other people and potentially other people. The other thing is forgiveness is not black and white. It doesn't look like oh, I forgave you and that's it. No, there's a lot of working on yourself based off of what you went through with someone else. Like if someone, an ex or something broke your heart, but let's say you have kids with them, then obviously there's, a t there's attachments that you have where you may still have to interact with them. Forgiveness is not gonna look like every day, oh, la-di-da, like, hey, we're just friends. No, it's not gonna look like that. It's gonna be something you actually have to work on. It's gonna be something that you may have to face differently every single day. So today, we may be cool, we may be vibing, but maybe you trigger me and we ain't cool no more because you just triggered me. Or maybe you didn't even intentionally trigger me, but maybe someone said something and then I bring that baggage back to you. So forgiveness is gonna look different every day. Some days forgiveness may be very easy. Other days it may be very challenging because the past comes up again and you're triggered. And we talk about that in Healers Break the Hill, the book that I wrote. Um, the Guide to Forgiveness, which you guys can find on Amazon as well. We talk about triggers, trigger wise, and you really have to dig deep into why am I a trigger right now? Why am I bothered by this? And what work do I need to do to heal this broken part of me? Because that forgiveness process, it's not just one thing that a lot of people do to us. It's like multiple things. It's routines. It's patterns. It's the way they loved us and didn't love us in another moment. It's the neglect. It's the abandonment. It's the intentionally trying to break you down. Like all of those things, we have to face all of those things and say, okay, I'm hurt a little differently right now. And I need to go through that forgiveness process all over again. Because honestly, forgiveness doesn't stop. It doesn't end. Um, we're constantly forgiving people. I mean, even if you look at a child to parent relationship, parents are going to F up. They're going to mess up. You know, it's natural because we're all humans. We're all 
growing and we're all technically still children whether we think oh I'm an adult no there is no real adult thing we're all still learning it's more so your energy that shows your level of wisdom than it is your actual age so we're always working on that energy as humans and we sometimes put people on a pedestal and say well you're older than me or you're my parent or you're my grandparent you should know this you should know that and then we realize one day that we may be a parent or we may be a grandparent or older than someone and we still don't know something so forgiveness is so important because it reminds us that we could be in their same shoes and we could say the same things that they said or make somebody feel the same way that they made us feel and we want to offer them that grace that we would want in that situation and that's why boundaries is so important like we even have to put those boundaries on ourselves with other people the amount of energy we give to other people the amount of times that we show up for other people we have to think about all of those things because we have to protect our peace and other people's peace and we have to be understanding that we may be giving somebody too much for them to grow on their process we may be giving someone a little bit too much less than what we should be giving them based off of what they're asking for but then we also have to reflect and we're like well if I give them much more of myself that kind of leaves me empty and there is no guidebook to any of this it's just a, a a big cycle a big pattern and a big experiment exploring all of these different avenues of going with each person in our life and i feel like the more we have you know an increase in friends or an increase in family members the different routines we have to find the different patterns we have to find because we are trying to adapt ourselves to the people in our life and that's not always a bad thing like some people think chameleons is people that are chameleons are people pleasers not necessarily because in in you know even though it's not necessarily it is also necessarily so we may be people pleasing but people pleasing can be a problem when we are constantly thinking about their needs and not thinking about our needs but it can also be when we are trying to love people the way that they've asked to be loved so there's a lot of different ways that people pleasing goes and can work and isn't too healthy the one that i think is not healthy is literally thinking about how you can please each person in your life and it is to your detriment that's where i see it being unhealthy where it's to your detriment but if it's in a way that makes you feel good and you know you love this person in your life is people pleasing really that bad you know forgiveness and boundaries is very very important because we have to the forgiveness aspect comes hand in hand where we try to give ourselves grace as well we have to practice forgiveness for others so we can practice that self-forgiveness for ourselves and see that each person is just learning and then the boundaries come hand in hand when we're trying to make sure that our cup is still even if it's not full it's still being fed and it's still being nourished because realistically our cup is not always going to be full no matter how hard we try our cup's not always going to be full but we can feed ourselves we can give to ourselves we can nurture ourselves and give ourselves what we need to ensure that we're always filling it up even if it's not full but we're always putting more into it just like our body like we have to feed ourselves day to day we have to feed ourselves but we're never going to be full eternally just from filling up our bodies or our cup so i think that that's kind of a, a medical a metaphor to explain that we're always going to have to put more into ourselves and into others even throughout life when it comes to these boundaries they're super super important because we want to ensure that we're protecting our own energy and not only thinking about the other person and them knowing that we've forgiven them or them knowing that we want them to come back in our lives but those boundaries teach them how to respect you how to love you how to honor you in the way that is healthy for you so if you don't really know how to put up boundaries with these people in your life 
then you want to consider how you feel when they're around. Do I feel recharged when this person is around or do I feel more empty, more so empty? And some of these people that have hurt us, we may not be at a healed space to be around them. So now it's just unhealthy to be around them. Sometimes people say really harmful things and we think the next day we need to be around them. We don't. We really don't because it's not healthy because we still haven't healed that part of us. So these boundaries are protecting both you and that other person. And even if you have to say your two cents, you feel like you need to curse that person out. Sometimes that's not what we really feel. And that's not us necessarily speaking through spirit because we are operating potentially at a lower vibration. Now, I'm not saying that you can't curse somebody out because you definitely can. That throat chakra can vibrate, honey. I fully believe in that. However, if your heart doesn't really feel that way and you're just saying that because you want to hurt somebody, not because you're trying to get, you know, release that energy that you have, now we have a problem. Now that's where you're not vibrating at your own energy. And when I say you're vibrating at a high frequency, that means that you're vibrating at your truest frequency. So if someone does something to hurt you and then you do something to hurt them, that's not doing anything for anybody. You know, that's just tit for tat. That's just revenge. So now you're going to regret the decision that you've made instead of creating the proper boundaries that you needed to by giving yourself space from this person. This person really hurt me. Now I need to face how I feel. I'm angry. But that anger is really sadness. So how do I now express my sadness so that I can forgive this person but also explain to them what they did to me hurt and made me feel a certain way that is what it looks like working with spirit you know but even cursing somebody out sometimes i do believe that you can curse people out and still be vibrating at your truest frequency and that it can still be considered not necessarily a high frequency, but a, a healthy frequency because I do feel that people do need to know about themselves and need to be aware of what they're doing and how they're affecting people in the way that they're moving. Now, that's not always our job, but if you feel like your heart is leading you to telling somebody what you're doing is wrong, like an activist does, then that's still healthy. That's still impactful. That's still incredible. That's amazing. I mean, you could literally be helping other people from getting hurt with that person and I think that that is healthy I think that's high vibrational we have to think about the people that were activists in the past who stood up for rights that's still high vibrational but it may not look pretty to most people people are like oh this is oh my god oh this is ghetto but no it's actually high vibrational because it's leading to the liberation and the freedom of people so it honestly depends on how we all see things and how we perceive things ourselves but if it's something that's draining for you nine times out of ten you need to shed that off of yourself and you need to work through that if it's something that's liberating for you and liberating for other people then nine times out of ten it probably is on more of a higher vibration and forgiveness is not simple it's not a two-step process it's not black and white but if you can work through what feelings are stemming from what someone did and how it makes you feel feelings are very powerful in helping you make your next steps so if you can face your feelings and get to the root of them where it started trigger why then you can really start that forgiveness process and start protecting yourself putting up those boundaries to make sure that you are leading into a more positive direction with the people you want in your life and the people that you want to move forward with in your life. The hardest thing I have to say is dealing with someone that's like a family member that is constantly hurting you because family members are the ones that typically hurt us the most because we love them so much and we're so invested in that blood bond that we keep investing into it you know we keep putting into it. we keep putting love into it and it is very painful when someone that you love by nature naturally betrays you or does things to hurt you especially when it's a parent or a sibling or even a cousin an aunt 
uh, an uncle, uh, whatever that family relationship is for you, that one hurts a lot because you naturally have this trust for them. You naturally have this love for them because they've been around. And when someone like that does something to you, oh man, it's, it's, it, it really just tears you down. So how do we continue relationships with these people that are by nature in our lives and naturally related to us? How do we continue those relationships when they hurt us? Well, I have to say, I don't know it all. <laughs> Let's start there. But I have in my own life continued relationships with people that have hurt me repeatedly because they're family and they've been kept close to me um, and even close friends. How did I move forward? I have to say it looks a little different for each relationship and depending on what they've done to me. One thing that I don't take lightly is abuse, especially depending on the type of abuse that it is, sexual abuse you'll be cut off you know you'll be cut off especially if you're highly aware of what you're doing you will be cut off how that could work in your life is did this person acknowledge what they've done to you and if they didn't acknowledge it were they on the same level as you do you feel like they have more wisdom than you and they intentionally did what they did those are things that you can ask yourself those are things that i asked myself Anyone who intentionally harmed me and had enough wisdom to know what they were doing, those are the people that I typically cut off. People who are very clearly going through their own things and not intentionally hurting me, but hurting me because they're hurt, because hurt people hurt people, those people I typically forgive, but I also make them highly aware of what they're doing. This hurt me when you said this, and I know that you're healing but that doesn't negate the fact that what you're doing is hurting people. You're bullying people because you feel unheard. You're bullying people because, you know, your childhood wasn't that great. Yes, I see that. I see that you're hurt. But it doesn't give you the right to hurt other people. And that's basically conversations I'll have with other people. Because that's a boundary. I'm setting a boundary. I'm saying you're not going to bully me anymore. You're not going to step all over me anymore. And honestly, you might not have even gotten to the point where you step all over me because I don't allow that. We have to let people know this is not okay. I'm not okay with it. I don't like the way you're talking to that person. I don't like the way you're talking to me. I don't like the way you're treating that person. I don't like the way you're treating me. You cannot do that without suffering a consequence. And sometimes that consequence is the person that you hurt. You know, maybe it's that hurt that you see them walk around with. Maybe you change someone's life in a more negative way and they're walking around with that pain every day. They're walking around with that depression every day. Those are some of the burdens that some of these people have to go through. But I personally think that it's best to make people aware of the way that they're hurting you and other people. Tell people. Because if you don't tell them, how will they know? And if you feel like they already know what they're doing, I'd still tell them. I would still tell them because sometimes people have to hear a message multiple times to receive it. And like we're talking about in this video about boundaries, that is a boundary, a very clear boundary you're setting. And another boundary you could set is just not being around that person. There are many people where I see just their nastiness and I'll say, I literally get the ache being around you because you just have like an icky energy and I don't want to be around that icky energy because I want to keep my energy fluffy and pretty and cute and fun and adventurous and cosmic so I don't want to be with your ickiness because your ickiness is contagious and I would never let myself get that far to be touched by the ickiness so even letting people know mm, your energy is nasty let them know. And if you can't handle their backlash after that, then I wouldn't suggest saying anything because, you know, it's they're going to say something, especially people that have eh, energy. They're always going to say something and they're always going to try to attack you. And if you feel like you don't have control of your emotions, I suggest you send them a text message and leave it at that. Or I suggest you say it to them and then you kind of just, you know, listen to what they're saying, but you don't react to it. If you're not at the level of or the capacity of being able to do that, then it may not be the time for you to say something. 
maybe ask somebody else to say something or maybe pray or intend light a white candle on some people I, I've met a lot of negative Nancy's and nagging Nancy's in my life and I find that you know there was this one person that had a really bad energy the first time they met me and they were just talking to me and spazzing and I was just like are you doing okay today you good and it kind of makes them ask themselves, wait, why do I have this energy? And if they don't ask themselves that, they may ask you. They may say, why are you asking me that? Well, because you're like raising your voice and you're talking to me in a way that I don't deserve. So what's going on? You want to talk about it? You need a hug? I've had a lot of situations where I've had to ask people that um, because I, I just feel like if I don't deserve something, I'm going to make it known. I don't deserve this energy. And it's been pretty easy to forgive those people because some people just bring baggage, you know, on and on throughout their life. And I'm aware that not everything people do is a reflection of me, but it's oftentimes a reflection of themselves. And with that awareness, it, it has led me to be able to forgive people a lot more easily than I ever have been before noticing or realizing that people act based off of themselves and not necessarily always because of you. Their effect that they have on people is oftentimes because of themselves and the way they see themselves. So anytime I've had a situation where I've interacted with someone who acts just negative or rude and stuff like that, I always, I always try to ask them, you know, what's going on with you? Are you okay? Do you need a hug? Um, or I may start laughing uncontrollably, <laughs> but I also try to light white candles for people that I feel like need prayer to, you know, get a little uplifted. A lot of people try to send negative energy to people that are negative to them, but fire with fire just makes more fire. I personally believe in praying for people like that and intending that people become a more healed version of themselves so that hurt people don't hurt people anymore and instead they become a healed person who's healing other people around them because I very much believe in healing other people by you healing yourself so forgiveness looks different there's a lot of different stages of forgiveness there's a lot of different types of forgiveness that you go through there's going to be heavy forgiveness where you have to be forgiving people for years I mean, literally, even until the day that you die, there may be people that every day you deal with the trauma that they gave you, that they offered you, that they left you with. And every day you have to wake up and say, I forgive this person. I forgive myself through this process. I'm letting it go. And then tomorrow you may be triggered again and have to let it go all over again or go through it all over again because letting go isn't necessarily like just dropping something it's it doesn't look like that it really doesn't letting go is saying what we just said I know this is a reflection of them and not me that's sometimes what letting go looks like other times letting go may be I am hurt and I realize that I'm hurt but the anger that I have that's not for me to carry that's just not for me to carry. So I don't want to carry it anymore. I'm sad and I know that I have to carry that emotion, but that anger that I have and would want for revenge is not something I need to carry. That's something that they have to deal with themselves. Because if I take revenge, then now I have to carry another burden and I don't deserve that. So forgiveness looks different every single day, every single day. And some days it's gonna be a lot easier than others. But as long as we are facing the fact that we have to do our healing as well and not always just holding other people accountable, but holding ourselves as well and creating those boundaries for ourselves and other people, we're on the right page. We're on the right path. And that is an amazing pattern to practice by looking at yourself. Why does what this person does hurt me so much? Do I believe part of what they're saying or part of what they're doing is what I deserve? Do I believe that? Do I feel I deserve to be told that I am unworthy of the life that I want? Because it wouldn't affect me as much if I didn't believe what they're saying. So ask yourself those questions. 
don't be afraid to dive into that it's, it's a little bit of a deep hole so it gets a little dark too don't be afraid to dive into that and if you ever need a support uh system or a partner through that process don't be afraid to sign up for therapy don't be afraid to look for coaching life coaches um spiritual coaches whatever whatever support you can find even mentors or people who have gone through similar things as you look for support groups because this stuff gets dark very fast and you can even get books that help you self-help books read them listen to them on audiobook fill out the workbooks I have a workbook and the reason why I set it up as a workbook instead of just a book is because I feel like the process needs to be written out by the person that's going through that process of forgiveness and in my book I share my own stories with you all so that you have an idea, idea of how it looks to go through that healing process and what it feels like and I know a lot of people have said that they've read the book and worked through the book and they cried with each prompt that I, I gave because they could feel the emotion that I put into it. And that vulnerability is what I put out into the world so that you all know that it's important to face your deepest, darkest thoughts, to face your anger, to get to the root of your anger, your sadness, your hurt, your pain, so that you can authentically and vividly release it because if you do not face that pain you're carrying it along on your journey if you do not face those weird thoughts that make you feel sick then you're still carrying that with you you're carrying that illness with you and the book that i wrote is to heal that illness not to give it medicine just to go along with it and those receptors just be quiet no, we don't want those receptors to be quiet. We want them to let us know what our body is carrying because our body remembers that pain. Even if we numb the feeling of that pain, our body remembers that pain that we're going through. It was so important to actually heal the problem and not just numb it. We can't just numb it. We can't just push it aside. I mean, even people talk about meditation and how, oh, when you meditate, you just have to push your thoughts to the side. It's really not that easy to do that. And honestly, it's not that healthy. Sometimes you have to start off meditating and listening to those thoughts and then pushing them to the side, taking notes of those thoughts and then pushing them to the sides. And sometimes you're going to have a hundred meditations where you can't push any thought to the side. You can't push any of it to the side because it's stuff that you need to go through. It's stuff that you need to face so that you can actually heal it, actually fix it, actually nurture it, and then be at peace with it. That peace is what automatically pushes it to the side. So when you face these thoughts, these pains, you can then push it to the side. Just like when you authentically go through that forgiveness process is when you can create healthy boundaries. And if you keep just telling yourself you're forgiving somebody and you keep letting them in your life, but you keep carrying that hurt and that pain in your body, mind, and spirit, it's gonna come out in some way. You're either gonna get snippy with them, you're gonna show some ounce of, I don't like you, I don't wanna be around you, instead of that good energy of, I really do forgive you. I really forgive you because you went through that process. It's not about just letting people be in your life just because they want to be. It's about letting people in your life because you've authentically forgiven them if they've hurt you and you authentically want to be around them. You feel good around them. If you do not feel good around somebody and you feel that you've forgiven them, you've got a lot more work to do. So those boundaries are what actually protects the forgiveness that you're building for yourself and other people. Make sure that you are authentically living in that forgiveness by creating those boundaries and letting people know this is the amount of access that you have with me. This is the amount of access I'm allowing you to have because my energy is valuable. My energy is healing. And I want to feel good. I don't want to just say I feel good around you. I want to feel good because there is a difference. I can say all day that I feel good and I can feel sick around you. Have you ever been around someone that you feel sick? 
around or that you just feel sick anytime you see them, hear their name, you're just, Ugh. I want to throw up. Oh, my stomach hurts. Oh, my back hurts. Oh, I have to keep stretching around this person. These are stress responses. So if you're not listening to those stress responses, then you're not nurturing your mind, body, and spirit. And you're honestly not nurturing theirs either. So what's the purpose? Forgive these people authentically so that when you are around them, you can feel that healing energy. And sometimes you're never going to need to be around a certain person that you've forgiven. Sometimes you really just don't because that process may still need work. There are people in my life that I have very much forgiven. Every day I work on forgiving them, but I don't need them in my life. I don't need them. What value are you bringing me? And we have to ask ourselves that. What value, what what exchange are we experiencing? Because if when we're together and I'm giving you everything and you're not giving me anything, I can still forgive you for take, take, taking, but I'm not gonna keep putting myself in that position where I'm just gonna keep getting my energy stripped away from me. That's not love. And I notice that. And I forgive you. However, I don't need to be around you. There's only emptiness in this relationship when it comes to me. I'm only receiving emptiness. So, sorry, not sorry, gotta go. I really hope that this did help you guys. I rambled a lot in this, but I think I spoke to my spirit and I'm really trying this thing where I experience something and I share it with you all. And I'm transparent about the process of forgiveness and healing because that's what we're doing here. We are here to heal become our authentic selves and vibrate higher every single day and that's what it looks like so thank you for watching another episode and listening to another episode of healers break to heal i hope to see you all in another one and i hope you have a beautiful healing journey